How's it going? It is Charles Botenston. I did a video of the five expectations of the coming year. That's in a separate video. Highly recommend you check this out. This is going to be tailored directly to all the people that are going to be in the residential marketplace, buyers, sellers, renters, landlords, investors, and I'm going to cover new development. So before I start, there is a lot of talking points out there. Fox Business, CNBC, CNBC can't even say the names, MSNBC, they're all just getting data. Whether they have your best interests at heart, probably not. It's just really good clickbait or really saucy headlines. And they're just saying, hey, listen, look at this video. Real estate market is down 70%. It's like you're comparing it to June or you're comparing it to May where doing transactions was actually illegal. So you couldn't doing transactions was legal. You couldn't show home. So when people compare it, they're, they're saying this from a month when they can actually do the transactions or couldn't even actually show the homes, of course it's gonna be down. So this is not data because there's no data. There's no need for data. This is exactly what I'm dealing with right now from all my buyers, sellers, landlords, investors, renters, new developments, all of that. So let's get right into it. Buyers, let's start with that. I had, we put in an offer yesterday on a home. We got quoted 30 year fixed, 2.875. We are below inflation. We are below inflation on a 30 year fixed mortgage. I didn't think, literally, I, we put in an offer on another place a week ago, they were quoted at 3.15. And I said, you need to lock in this rate because it's not getting, in, getting any lower. And then sure enough, a week later, they get quoted below 3%. That's crazy. So first, let's give it up for that. Buyers, getting a lot of this. There is no buyer marketplace. Okay. In other words, there's no meta, there's no overarching buyer marketplace. Every home is completely different. And the reason being is that I'm putting in offers where the home is very overpriced. So we're putting in offers that are about seven to 10% below the asking price. It offends the owner, maybe, but I also have properties that the owner is down about 10%. So we have to put it at 10% below what the owner wants, okay? So really when people say, well, what offer can I put in? It's not what offer you could put in. What is the market value? I put the offer we put in yesterday was at the asking price. Why? Because the agent said, listen, I put it about 6% below the asking price so I can field as many offers as I can, then do a best and final. He literally said that. So I said, great, we'll put in the asking price knowing my buyers will go above the asking price. So it's not an actual buyer's marketplace. There is an individual home marketplace, which is why I cannot stress working with an agent that is a professional in this time. This isn't like you should always work with an agent. This is you should really consider working with an agent during this time so you can banter back and forth the best way to get the most amount of money off of the asking price or include the furniture. I'm in a deal right now. Furniture is included. The owner didn't want to do it. He had to because that was the best. And that's the only offer we have. So it's like, you know, why not? So buyers, yes, buy this year. This is the best year. This is very reminiscent, before I get to sellers, this is very reminiscent to 2009. I went through 2009. Everyone had uncertainty. Every, everyone thought the world was gonna end. It was 8 million people didn't have jobs. Obviously, yes, there's more, but that was permanent 8 million people. How many recover from this? I don't know, but I'm just talking about the sentiment. Three and a half million people, four, 4 million people were in foreclosure in 2009. Everyone said, don't buy, don't buy. All the people that bought, they made a huge amount of money literally almost a hundred percent, you know, five and a half to six years later when I resold it. So this is the year. Why? Civil unrest, COVID election year. This is the year to buy. It's not next spring when people are more giddy and happy and COVID is sort of behind us, hopefully. Sellers, I just got literally a Facebook message from someone right before this said, is it a good time to sell? Literally, right before I filmed this, I said, I'm gonna be doing a video and I'm gonna be talking about this. No, why? Because say she wants a dollar, I'm gonna say, unfortunately, the market is gonna give you 90 cents or 80 cents. You're like, well, that doesn't sound like a lot. What if I said you want a million, but the market is only gonna give you 900,000? Makes more sense then. This is only the market for the people that need to sell. They bought out in the suburbs and they don't need their home anymore. They, they upgraded or they got a bigger space out in the suburbs or someone's in one bedroom and they're gonna be working from home so they need a two bedroom or they moved out and it's vacant or whatever the case is, doesn't matter. If you're a seller, 
you have to consider what the actual price of your home is, okay? It is not what you want it to be, especially now. And the reason being, people will not even visit it. They will not even visit it. They won't even show up. So there's not even, I can't even do my job if nobody shows up. I can't ask for feedback. I can't sell the home. I can't talk about how great it is if no one is contacting me. And it's not my marketing. 12 years in the industry, I've honed in the best ways to market a home. It's not the marketing. Unfortunately, right now, it is what is your home priced at with a professional, with the right marketing. That's the only way a home is going to sell. So if a seller comes up to me, I say, it's a good time to sell. Here's the price. And if they say no, I don't want another agent to be buying your listing. In other words, the age, I'll say, you know, I'll give you an example. Someone on the Upper West Side, I've done three or four deals in the building. She contacts me. We've been in touch for the last two years. She says, we actually stayed in the apartment. We renovated it. What can we get for it? I said, honestly, it's going to be what you bought it at plus your renovation costs and maybe a little bit less. She goes, I don't want to sell. I go, great, fantastic. I'll be in touch in a year and a half, two years when I can get you that pricing. However, keep in mind, I don't want another agent to come in and give you a promise. You have to move out of the home or leave from the home or sanitize the home because you're going to have people coming and going because they bought the listing and they gave you an overzealous, un unexpected price. Number three, renters, mass exodus, mass exodus. If there is a mass exodus, it is renting, okay? They're not re-signing their leases. They're going to the Jersey Shore. They're going to the Hudson Valley. They're going out east to Long Island, or they're just going home to wherever their parents live, Ohio, Virginia, Florida, California, wherever. I, I have a ridiculous amount of people that are doing that. And that is one, the people that are staying in New York City, very good because you can renew your lease and get money off. Okay, I'm going to do a separate video about that because that's one of my top questions. How do I renew? How do I re how do I renew my lease and get money off? Okay, so if you're a renter, your lease is coming up. Really consider it. Say, listen, I might be moving out to Long Island, Connecticut. I don't know, California, wherever. Work from home from there, and then I'll be back in 2021. That's what a lot of people are doing. They, their business said, you don't even have to come back in 2020. It's completely optional. You can work from home. So guess what they're doing? Why am I going to pay rent? I'm just going to go to a place that's less expensive, bigger, on a beach or near the Hudson, and I could run and bike all day, beautiful sunshine, I could be with my family, bigger space, whatever. So renters, huge exodus, which leads me direct into directly into landlords. Landlords, yes, I love investing. I love investing. Investing is my top specialty. I love the numbers. I love the return, what we can get. You're not in a good place right now, okay? If you are a homeowner, you probably need to sell it. The rental market is, which has been on fire up until COVID. It, even though a purchase pricing has been going down to, since 2018, sliding since 2018, the rental market has been increasing because people said, you know what? There's too many homes on the market. Paradox of choice. If there's 50 homes, I'm not going to make a choice. So I'm just going to renew. Now, like I just said, they're going outside of the city is that landlords are screwed. You're screwed. I'm sorry. This year, it's going to be really tough. I had this conversation yesterday with a landlord. I've done 30 rental transactions. We managed probably about seven of his properties for the last five or six years. He relies on me for everything. And I told him, and it was the first time he actually said, Damn, it was the first time he actually said, okay. And the reason being is that I told him, I'm not even having people contact me to see the home. I'm not, a home that I would normally get rented in three days. I'm not even having people, I have had two or three people in three weeks, three weeks contact me when I would have normally rented it in two days. So I'm not even having people contact me. So guess what that means? It's the price. And it's actually below what he received not only last year, but right around what he would have received three years ago. I just put another one into contract that's also a landlord that is about the rental level is from four years ago. Four years ago. It went up, back down to four years ago. So this leads me to the second to last thing, which is investors. If you're an investor, you have to change the formula. Change the formula on buying, change the floor formula on what to expect when you rent it out. Huge. 
This is everything. Your ROI is going to be totally different. An apartment that you would have got 4,000 for, now you're getting 3,500. An apartment that you would have got 6,000, you're getting 5,000. No joke. It's serious on what the decrease is between expectations of maybe three years ago or three years from now, as opposed to right now. It will rebound, but this is a very depressed time for renting. Everyone's leaving. No one's actually renewing their lease. I'm getting a ton of those. And lastly, new development. New development. This is my microphone, by the way. New development is, I cannot stress the amount of things that you could potentially put into a new development offer. I have two buyers, healthy budgets, looking at brand new developments. Guess what they're going to get? A deal. They're going to get a deal. This is very 2009, as I said earlier in this video, very 2009 in the fact that you can put in transfer taxes paid by the owner, which back in, say, last year or the year before, you would have to pay for the attorney fee. You'd get uh, credit at closing. You can get, obviously, a lower purchase price, potentially. There's a lot of things that you could put into the deal, maybe customizations into the home, maybe a further move out, maybe common charges taken care of or taxes taken care of, something, something taken care of, probably common charges over taxes, but common charges taken care of for two years or three years or something like that. And the reason being is that the developer needs a certain price based on schedule a that he files with the state in the offering plan schedule a pricing which means that he has to get that pricing to satisfy the bank that gave him the mortgage and right now they're owing money on taxes for the land and all the apartments if they're still building it obviously the land or the apartments they have holding cost of bank interest, bank principal, and construction costs, and they're not putting anything into contracts or they're not even getting 10% contract deposits to offset that. There's gonna be huge influx of either foreclosures or very expensive apartments. And I'm not talking about the ones that are like two or $3 million that are on the higher end of maybe someone's budget that are like 1,500 to 2,000 or maybe 2,100 a square foot. I'm talking about the ones that are in the 50s that are at 3,000, 4,000, 5,000 a square foot or higher. Those are the ones that are screwed because there's not enough people for that. There's not enough uncertainty worldwide for money to pour into the United States like they did in 2014, 2015 cash deals from overseas in Russia or South America or China coming in, buying an LC, dumping money in cash. I don't really care. We believe in it. Unfortunately, right now, a lot of that money is dried up. But if you are someone that is looking at a new development that's 1,500 a square foot or 2,000 a square foot, anywhere between there, you can really get a discount. Maybe not on the price. Maybe on the price. Depends on each one. And obviously, the, the developer doesn't want a lower price going public because that means everyone else is going to go lower. So he says, we'll give you more money at closing. We'll cover your comment charges. We'll do no transfer taxes. We'll take care of the attorney. We'll take care of your closing costs, whatever the case is. So... There's a lot of deals to be had. I cannot stress enough. I know this video is way too long and you probably didn't stay till the end, but I cannot stress that not listen to mainstream media. They are not in the trenches. They are not showing apartments. They are getting data and they're getting tons of data from the financial, they're from the manufacturing, from the services, from real estate. They're getting all this data. They're not a specialized individual like a real estate agent that's a professional that's actually doing transactions. I'm extremely busy and that's not to, you know, pat myself on the back, but it's saying I actually know what's going on. So when someone tells me something, I'm like, that's incorrect, you know? And this is the last thing, because a lot of people say that they're like, you know what, I'm going to put in a price that's 10% below the asking price. I'll leave you, leave you on this. And there's um, a lot of people that are considering this. And the reason being is that that's not a good idea is because it's a good idea to do that if the owner is serious, but a lot of the owners, this is why you have to call the listing agent and say, Hey, listen, is the owner aware that I know you have this on at a million dollars, but it's really should be priced at 925 or should be go about 910, 930, 940. Are they aware of that? Sometimes the agent says, Hey, listen, they bought it at 1.2. A million dollars was a complete discount on what they purchased at. They're not going to go to 950 or 940. They're just going to rent it out. I'm in a scenario like that. So give your, give your agent or make sure your agent calls the listing agent and say, hey, listen, are they going to rent it out or are they going to sell it at 925? Because 925 is the market, pr market price. Imagine that. Someone buys it at 1.25. Buys it at 925, 930, 940, 950. That's where all of your growth is. Have an amazing, and by the way, you're paying less in transfer, I'm sorry, less in closing costs because it's below the mansion tax and you don't have the gradual mansion tax. Have an amazing day. If you guys have any questions, shoot me an email, charles at botanston.com. If anything, just, hey, listen, this is what I'm thinking of doing. You know, let's, let's uh, banter back and forth, see if it's a good idea. Talk to you guys soon, next month.